Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to episode 42 of Convince Me. We are on the clock, but the pick is in. And the winner of the best podcast having to do with football on Super Bowl week goes to... Yeah, it's probably not us, but this is where you stumbled. So welcome to Convince Me. Welcome in, everybody. It's another week uh, here at Convince Me, episode 42, itching ever closer to that year mark, gentlemen. Uh, I am uh, Andy Rutherford, joined as always by Mr. Brian Bennett, Mr. Casey Elrod. Gentlemen, how goes it this week? I'm ready. You know how they say the NFL draft is, is a is fresh start for teams. Well, tonight, I can assure you, this team is going to absolutely maul Bennett's team tonight. And this is going to be embarrassing. You know, before, before we get into uh, the draft, we've got one more um, football game that needs to be played. It's a big one. Uh, the big, the big one, Super Bowl. And Rudd, I'm going to put you on the spot here. Who have you got in the Super Bowl? Do you, do you go with the, uh, do you go with Brady and him submitting his legacy, or do you go with Mahomes and the Chiefs and them starting their starting a dynasty run? Here, here's my thing. I've went back and forth over this for probably the last couple of weeks, and you know, uh, it's it's January. This last Sunday was, of course, we're all to some degree, at least at some point in our lives, big wrestling fans. I still try to keep up. And this last Sunday was the Royal Rumble. That means it's WrestleMania season for the next couple months. So I've been looking at this from a wrestling perspective and something we talked about a few weeks ago on the show. Actually, it may have been a few months ago now. It has been a few months. But no, it was a few weeks. Anyway, I'm losing track of time. But we go back. We've discussed it twice. But we go back to WrestleMania 18. And you've got The Rock versus Hollywood Hogan. You've got the old guard, the established guy, the, the, the guy for years, Hulk Hogan, whose face you could very well turn into Tom Brady. And you've got the hot young upstart who's about to be the biggest thing in the world with The Rock, who you could put as Patrick Mahomes there. Uh, I think, first of all, bet the over. Uh, if that's the kind of thing you do, I think both of these quarterbacks are going to show out, but I think this is the passing of the torch. I think Brady passes the torch, not because he wants to, but Brady will pass the torch to Mahomes. I do think it's close. I think it's a one score game. I think it's a shootout, but I'm taking the chiefs. Hmm. Hmm. You know, in these big time games, where you have two high-powered offense, whether it's in college basketball, NFL, NBA, when you have these two high-powered offenses, you always want to see bat the, the over. But very often, the under in these big, big stage events, you got to bet the under because these defenses usually come out of nowhere in, in these games. So we'll see. We will see. Yeah, I guess we will. But uh, anyway, big game this weekend. Big game today um, on this show. And actually, the results of another game, uh, so to speak. <coughs> Pardon me for the cough. I need a cough button on this microphone here. Um, but anyway, before we get into all that, we're going to go into, as always, the weekly shield. Guys, if you're listening to us, here comes the Bennett graphic. Uh, if you're listening to us or watching us, Star whatever, Wars, whichever <laughs> it may be, make sure you're following us on all of our socials. Uh, probably our most active would be Facebook. That's facebook.com slash convince me show. If you're not watching this on Tuesday night on Facebook, the next Tuesday night, Catch the preview of next week's episode over there. Every week we have a preview 
uh, up on Tuesday nights at six o'clock central standard time over at facebook.com slash convince me show. Uh, so we're on Facebook. We're also on Twitter. We can be found at convince me show. Occasionally we get lazy and we let you guys pick, uh, what the topic is going to be for that week's show. And when we do that, we do that over on Twitter. We can also be found on Instagram. Instagram has nothing overly special going on for it like Facebook and Twitter do. But if you're going to follow us on those, you might as well follow us over there. We are over there also at Convince Me Show. And of course, the YouTube channel, tinyurl.com slash Convince Me Show. That's where you're going to find every episode in their entirety in video format every single week. Make sure you're catching us over there. Once again, tinyurl.com slash convince me show. And of course, the podcast drops every Wednesday morning wherever you listen to your favorite podcast. If we're not where you listen to your favorite podcast, let us know. We'll do what we can to get on there. Uh, so that's the shield. And before we get into this draft, before Bennett and Elrod go head to head to see who is the best fictional football general manager, because if you haven't picked up on it yet, I don't think we've explicitly said it, which kind of buries the lead and makes us look bad. Uh, but this week's topic is Bennett and Elrod will be competing by drafting their teams that consist of quarterback, a running back, a wide receiver, an offensive lineman, a defender, a special teams player, and head coach entirely made up of fictional characters from TV and film. Uh, they will be doing that. We'll be doing that in the old convince me draft style that we've done a couple times that people seem to like. But before we do that, I want to jump back to right before this NFL season started. And Mr. Elrod had some puny little COVID yeah. uh, or something. Yeah. yeah, something. That wouldn't allow him to record the show. Me and Mr. Bennett had to, at the last minute, throw a show together. Uh, so we decided to lay down uh, some NFL predictions on that show uh, for the upcoming, well, at that point, the upcoming season. And now it's a season we just wrapped up. Um, Bennett? A couple of these made us look really smart. A couple of these made us realize why we don't get paid to do this. Uh -oh. um, yeah. There's a couple I think could be a toss-up, but I think most of them are pretty clear-cut uh, on who the winner was. Um, we'll just go <laughs> through these kind of quickly. When we talked, we broke it down, and we picked who we thought was going to be the best of 2020 – quarterback, running back, receiver, tight end. And then we thought who was going to be the breakouts of 2020 at quarterback, running back, receiver, and tight end. So looking at the quarterbacks, I went with the guy who was coming off a of Super Bowl MVP, the year before that, a league MVP. And I took Mr. Patrick Mahomes. And I think that's a pretty good pick. I think there's one person in the entire NFL you could even put in that conversation this last season. Mr. Bennett, did you pick that person? I did. Now, there was some controversy on this. Um, if you go back and listen, it sounds like I say Matthew Stafford. I could understand where people <laughs> hear that, but it's really – I really said Aaron <laughs> Rodgers. I don't know if there was a glitch or what, but great Los believe. Angeles Rams quarterback, I must say, Matthew Stafford. You know, I, I went with Matthew Stafford and uh he got traded, so <laughs> I think I lost that round. To be fair, he didn't have Kenny Galladay all year. And that defense was awful, so he didn't really So much for Matt Patricia. Yeah. But <laughs> I won that one pretty easily. By nose. Speaking of winning Barely. pretty easily, but maybe the other way, we picked the best running backs for this year. And I chose Saquon Barkley. Ooh. That, that very was a, nice choice. That was a good pick for a week, maybe. Um, <laughs> Mr. Bennett was very, very right, but also wrong at the same time on this. Uh, mm -hmm. Bennett went with Derrick Henry, uh, which was a pretty good pick. But I don't, I should have wrote this down, but I went back and listened to this show. Bennett gave his predictions on what Henry's numbers were going to be. Uh, I've got them. You've got, got them. Give, give what your my, predictions were. My predictions was 290 attempts, 
he had 378. God. <laughs> I said I said he would have 1,487 yards and still lead running backs. He had 2,027. I said he would have 14 touchdowns, and this is the closest I got. He had 17 touchdowns. <laughs> the Titans are going to run Derrick Henry to the ground. It's coming. I think this next oh, year he's going to have a big down year. Almost 400 carries for that That's man. That's ridiculous. The right. beast. Bennett picked him to be the best and still vastly underpredicted the carries, the yards, and pretty un- wow. underpredicted the touchdowns. I went conservative. Um, we looked at who we thought was going to be the best wide receiver of the year 2020, and we both sucked, um, to be quite honest. Um, I went with old reliable Julio Jones, who this year was unreliable Julio Jones. Missed a lot of games due to injury. Uh, speaking of missed a lot of games due to injury, Mr. Bennett went with Michael Thomas. Ooh. Um, Ooh. So. All right. I think everybody lost on that category. There were no winners. Um, and then tight end, who we picked would be the best tight ends. We said on that episode, there really were two. And there were. Uh, but one of those two got hurt and missed most of the season. And I picked that one. Uh, I went with George Kittle, and he got hurt and missed most of the season. And Along with most of the San Francisco 49ers roster. That's very fair. Uh, and then Bennett went with uh, the best wide receiver in the league at tight end, Travis Kelsey. Um, so Bennett wins that one as well. Uh, so if we look at who had the best of the best, who we thought would be the best, I had Mahomes, uh, and then Bennett wins. So that's that's, <laughs> that's about it on that. Um, can I already? Can I make a prediction? I predict when you're making these predictions next August that. Rudd is going to say that Cal Pitts is the best tight end in pro football. Uh, it's hard to say with a rookie tight end. In two it's years coming. Now, I'm, I'm predicting it right now. Two years. Hold the tape. Now, I definitely will. Um, but if he did, he would be a breakout. Me and Bennett looked at who he thought were going to be breakouts this year, and um, we did better on this one than we did on who would be the best. Um we each picked a quarterback of who we thought would be the best breakout quarterback. And when you look at fantasy uh, in scoring the way our league scores, half points per reception uh, and four-point touchdowns for quarterbacks, um, who we thought would be the breakout quarterbacks of the year, me and Mr. Bennett chose the quarterback one and the quarterback two for the year when you look at it from a fantasy perspective. I took Kyler Murray. Uh, from the Arizona Cardinals in his sophomore year. Of course, we know he had that big Hail Murray play uh, to DeAndre Hopkins. Really solid year. Cardinals barely missed the playoffs. Um, and most of the time, that would have been a fantastic pick for this category uh, since he did finish the number two quarterback on the year as far as fantasy value goes. Uh, but then Bennett took Josh Allen, and therefore I lost that one too. Yeah, you lost that one by nose as well. <laughs> So, uh, of course, Josh Allen, fantastic year. Uh, Bill's looking early 90s form this year behind Josh Allen. Bennett had some – do you have the stats you threw out? I know you made stats. uh, Real quick, I had him with uh, 3,300 yards and 24 touchdowns passing. He had 4,544 yards and 37 touchdowns passing. I had 600 – I had 600 rushing yards and eight touchdowns. He had 421 rushing yards and eight touchdowns. Benny hmm. gets the guys right. He just completely devalues how good they actually are. Um, he's, like, he's like those short sellers on Wall Street. Exactly. If only I could get my fantasy guys right. <laughs> yeah. uh, probably one of another really close race here is who we pick for our breakout running backs. Um, and really, it depends on how you look at this one to who wins. Uh, and I think it's kind of a toss up. Bennett went with Josh Jacobs, uh, from the Oakland Raiders, who had a solid year. Again, I like to look at things from a fantasy perspective. He was a top 10 running back this year, he finished number eight. And I went with a rookie running back from Washington, Antonio Gibson, um, who finished as the number 12 running back on the year. Uh, Jacobs did better over the course of the year. 
Uh, but Gibson really started, he didn't get all the, he didn't get a lot of opportunities those first couple of weeks and then really came into his own. Um, I think this one's kind of a toss up. Bennett, do you have anything that you think Jacob's think they were. hot edge? I mean, I think we were both right. They kind of landed where we thought they would. They're pretty solid picks on both of us. Here's a crazy stat I did find on Antonio Gibson's season this year. In the history of the NFL, rookie running backs with 11-plus touchdowns on less than 180 carries. Gale Sayers, Marcus Allen, Herschel Walker, Maurice Jones-Drew, Antonio Gibson. Hmm. Not a bad list to be on. Not a bad club. Not Not a bad club. So, uh, I think that's a win. As much as Julio and Michael Thomas was a loss for both of us, I would say this one's a win for the both of us. Um, if we we picked who we thought would be the breakout wide receivers, and if you look at the last four weeks of the season, I win. If you look at the season as a whole, Bennett destroyed me uh, on this one. Uh, I went with the speedster Hollywood Brown for the Baltimore Ravens. And he was great for the last month of the year. He did nothing the first three months of the year. Um, I had him on my fantasy team and was able to swiftly trade him to Mr. Elrod. Um, Bennett, however, picked a guy who kind of fell off the last month of the year, but the guy that finished number seven in fantasy value wide receiver, DK Metcalf. Uh, is his breakout this year. Bennett, congratulations, you won that one. The thing that I didn't predict was that he would give us one of the best memes for the year with him <laughs> running down the defender. <laughs> yeah, that was great. That was a great play. It was one of the best plays I've seen. Uh, and then lastly, we picked um, breakout tight ends. Neither one of these two guys sucked, but neither one of these two guys was that well, that great. And I went back and looked at the tight end fantasy rankings where these guys finished they were both tied in ones if you're in a 12-man league um which tells you how down the tight end position is uh in the nfl bennett went with noah fant um granted he had no quarterback um literally one game uh he had literally (laughs) so uh noah fant finishes the tight end 12 on the year as far as fantasy goes and I went with Mike Gesicki uh, for the Dolphins, who surprised, shockingly, even to me, finishes the number seven tight end in fantasy uh, mm-hmm. on the year. Uh, and I looked at that. He had like three games where he had 20 plus points. Uh, and then he also had like seven games where he had less than five points. So mm-hmm. um, consistency wasn't his thing, but neither one of those, a big loser or a big winner. Um, Overall, we both did okay. Personally, I'd give Bennett the slide edge. Um, I didn't pick anybody that just sucked. Uh, I picked guys that got hurt, uh, So, which Bennett kind of did too with uh, Thomas. And uh, Stafford wasn't really hurt. Stafford was probably the worst pick of the lot. But to be fair, I agreed with you on Stafford. So... <laughs> It's my fault. No. So, anyway. All right. So, there's the recap. Maybe next year, Elrod will get COVID again right before the season starts. I'm kidding. Would not wish that on anybody. Um, and we can uh, figure out who's going to be the best next year. Maybe Elrod can participate. And I am underprepared here. So, let me... Bennett, give a quick victory speech about your uh, prediction. You know, coming into the first week of the season, there was a lot of uncertainties. We didn't know Derrick Henry was going to rush for 2,000 yards. We didn't know Michael Thomas would give you zero touchdowns. But we we carried on. You know, we, we made some great picks. We didn't embarrass ourselves. You know, we I think – you know, I think if this uh, this podcast thing starts going downhill, I think we could just switch right over and be um, uh, scouts, really, you know, scouting this talent here. I mean, I think we did pretty good. I'm pretty proud of my picks, other than other than where you said 
I said Stafford. If you if you think I said Stafford, then I'll I'll roll with it. I'll fake I'll news. agree. But it's fake news. Just for the sake of the show, but I, I could have swore it sounded like Aaron Rogers Brady something. <laughs> that's that's uh that's where I was going with that. But you know, going back to the uh real quick, the Noah fan, that's actually the one that I was the closest on. I gave him 640 yards. He had 673. I gave him five touchdowns, and he had three touchdowns. So pretty pretty solid overall, I would say. All right. Thank you for such a good job killing time there. Uh, because I forgot how to determine who was going to go first on this oh. um, until right now. That's underprepared. That's unprofessional on my part, and I apologize. Uh, so with that being said, speaking of that episode that me and Mr. Bennett did, um, to determine who goes first, why am I not showing this on my end? Hold on. We are about as unprofessional as you can get. Uh, except me. I'm very professional. Very professional. You can do it right. I got faith in you. Here we go. Here. Go ahead. Okay. There we go. There we go. Mr. Elrod. Ooh. Nice. It's four tails. Well, I, you always make fun of my forehead, so I got to go with heads. Fair enough. It is heads. <laughs> Congratulations. Imagine that. Elrod lands on heads. Um, so here's the deal, Elrod. You have a choice. And your choice is as follows. You can pick to take the very first pick. Uh, but as always, this it will be a snake draft. So if you pick the first pick, the minute we'll have the next two picks uh, with the last round, with the last pick of the first round and first pick of the second round. Uh, so that's going to be your call, but it is your choice. Will you be picking first or second? I'm picking first, baby. Picking first. All right. Well, Mr. Elrod. <laughs> With I do that, have somebody in mind. With, with right. that said, the first the the pick is in. <laughs> Mr. Elrod selects with the first pick of the Convince Me draft. With the first pick, the worst team always has in mind who they're going to put in that envelope and send it to the commissioner. With the first pick, you've got to go with a franchise player, someone that's going to come in and make an immediate <coughs> impact on the team. And it's got to be the field general. It can't be a running back. It can't be a wide receiver. The first pick has got to be a quarterback. And no quarterback is going to come in and have an impact quite like Shane Falco. You got to go with the left hand, all American from Ohio State. We won't talk about his Sugar Bowl performance. A lot of people, a lot of people either get held back in the ball games or they're not mentally into it. So I'm not even going to talk about his 1996 Sugar Bowl performance. We're going to talk about his body of work as a whole. He came into a very difficult situation in the league. The league had, had these scabs. Of course, if, you, if no one's ever seen the replacements, there was a strike. Falco was pretty much at the house. He comes in. He's the, he's the general. In building this team, I'm looking for a quarterback and I'm looking for a leader. And there is no better leader in football than Shane Falco. Mr. Elrod, I have to say, me and you disagree on a whole lot of things. I make fun of you about a whole lot of things. You do. If I have the number one pick in this draft. I, too, would have selected Shane Falco. Big fan of the pick. For once, I'm proud of you. How about that? That is what I have been living my life for, Rut, is your, your, um, I don't know. 
I mean, Mark Shields, it probably will never happen again. It will never happen again. I am proud of you. So how about that? Let me elaborate some more on the rules. I know you guys know the rules, but as I kind of breeze through for all, all of our viewers and listeners, one quarterback, one running back, one receiver, one offensive lineman, one defensive lineman, one special teamer, one coach. That's it. So Mr. Elrod can pick no more quarterbacks. Mr. Bennett doesn't have to pick a quarterback right here. He can pick any position he wants, but those are the limits uh, that they have. So Mr. Bennett, Mr. Elrod takes Shane Falco quarterback as his number one pick. Who are you taking at the back end of the first round? My number one pick is uh, as a guy from the SEC. Um, I don't think this would be any self-respecting podcast if I didn't go from a guy hailing from Greenbow, Alabama, kick return specialist, Forrest Forrest Gump. Uh, this guy here, he impressed the legendary Bear Bryant on an impromptu uh, tryout. He He's running for his life here, and he, he outruns the pass. And uh, in a roundabout way, Bear Bryant says, who is that? With some extra words added in. And they said, oh, that's just Forrest Gump, just a local idiot. Well, he wasn't just a local idiot because Bear Bryant liked what he saw. And according to Bear Bryant, he says that Forrest Gump sure is fast. <clears throat> Here's some of the things that we know about Gump's career. We know he got a lot of playing time because he said college went by so fast because I played so much football. So we can suspect that he may have been a uh, – a first-year freshman return kicks. We don't know, but I can only assume since he said he played so much football. He may have played all four years. Um, we know that he was, uh, well, uh, he was a big uh, hit with the fans. He's very well known with the fans and the band. They are very, very aware of Forrest being one of their impact players. We know that Forrest scored at least one touchdown from a kick return which is pretty good. We do know that he was an All-American for Alabama during the Bear Bryant years, which is uh, – that's, that's pretty impressive to me. And the most impressive thing that nobody else on this list can say is that Forrest Gump met JFK. And when JFK asked him how he felt, he told the President of the United States that he had to pay. So for that alone, I think you have to take Forrest Gump here Probably the fastest guy that we're going to talk about, and um, one of the more fascinating figures that we're going to talk about. I, I had I had to go gun. It was an easy choice. You want to see my shot face on this? <laughs> what if Bennett had gone anybody else? It would have been the if anything, not to devalue the pick at all. I think it's a fantastic first round pick. But Bennett, of all people, if he picks anybody other than Forrest Gump in the spirit of this show, it just kills everything. Exactly. But here's what I'll say about this pick, and then, and then we're going to cut off the Facebook feed. Um, gentlemen, there's the last time we did a draft and I was mediating, I told you there was a special way I was scoring. There's no difference tonight, except it's a lot more my opinion than other people's opinions tonight. And I haven't clued either of you in into how I how I am doing it, how I'm going to do it, and I'm not going to until we're done. But I will say, gentlemen, with Elrod's pick of Shane Falco, Bennett's pick, uh, Forrest Gump, both of you are in really good shape right now, uh, heading towards a potential win. Uh, and if you want to see who comes out as the potential winner, and you're watching us on Facebook right now, you're gonna have to come back tomorrow. And you're going to have to check out the podcast or you're going to have to go over to YouTube, tinyurl.com slash convince me show uh, and check it out over there. But the good news, if you're currently listening to the podcast or watching YouTube, if you want to find out who wins, all you got to do is hang on for just a second because we will be right back. And we are back. Quick recap of the first round. Uh, again, Mr. Elrod, strong start uh, to this draft, taking Shane Falco, quarterback of the Washington Sentinels, with his number one pick. Then, of course, Bennett taking the rookie, 
return specialist, uh, all American return specialist extraordinaire uh, from the Crimson Tide of Alabama, Mr. Forrest Gump. So Bennett, you went where some people might have said it was strange. You take special teamer uh, with mm-hmm. your first pick. Personally, I think it's a great pick. Where do you go in the second round? Second round, people are still probably going to question me, but there is a method to my madness, and you'll see at the end how I've constructed this uh, draft perfectly here. But uh, my second round, I'm staying – I'm going defensive side of the ball. I'm going with a linebacker, Mr. Bobby Boucher. Everybody loves an underdog story, and Bobby Boucher is one of the ultimate underdog stories. He's this inept, socially inept water boy who becomes one of the nation's most feared linebackers. Um, He plays for South Central Louisiana State, I believe, and – with the help from his coach, Coach Klein, he's able to unleash this pent up anger that he's had boiling and he becomes a force on the field. He sets an NCAA record 16 sacks in one game, not a season, in one game. And most importantly, he helped the Mud Dogs snap a very long standing losing streak. streak sorry. Um, he had a little setback. He was ruled ineligible because he didn't graduate high school. So he got he missed some playing time, but he was able to get his GED and he returns during halftime of the Bourbon Bowl and helps the Mud Dogs score 30 unanswered four points to come from behind to win 30 to 27 in the very famous Bourbon Bowl. And he was named MVP of that. So you got to go Bobby Boucher there. He he definitely could have went pro and been a Hall, Hall of Fame top player, but he decided that that was enough for him, and he was going to hang up, call it a career right there at the Bourbon Bowl. As we see a lot of people do, retire at a young, early age, go out on top. So, mm. Bobby Boucher. Very, very solid selection there. Another reach. Round, round two. Reach. Elrod, who's going to be your second pick of this draft? Well, one thing I noticed about Bennett's picks is their reaches. These guys never play pro ball. My guys, this is going to be the theme of my draft, right? My, my draft is going to be built on consistency, not the flashy Bobby Boucher or Forrest Gump. Mine's going to be on real stars. So I don't like Ohio State, but my next pick is going to be also from the Ohio State University. And it's also going to be on the defensive side of the ball. And he, this guy, could have been the number one pick in the 2013 draft. A lot of people wanted Bo Callahan, the quarterback, but Vontae Mack is going to be my linebacker on the defensive side of the ball. This guy has all the tools you want in a linebacker. The NFL is becoming a league where you need speed. You need athletic linebackers to cover tight ends down the middle. You need someone that can blitz the quarterback. Vontae Mack, is the complete package, and he will be. If I got Shane Falco leading the offense, Vontae Mack is going to be leading this fierce defense that I'm building. So, with my second pick, the defensive line in the middle is going to be led by Vontae Mack. You said could have been the number one overall pick. He was, he was. the number he one was. overall pick he was because one, no matter what, no Vontae matter what. Mack. No matter what. Uh, excellent yeah. choice. Uh, so that will wrap up round two. Mr. Elrod, first pick of round number three. Oh, okay. So both of my picks so far have been high character guys. I mean, Shane Falco, maybe not as much as Vontae Mack. But I need to spice this up a little bit. I need speed on this team. And I need somebody with an edge. So, I'm going to go with, let's see here, Rod. I'm, there's two people I'm thinking about. Uh, where do I go? Where do I go? Where do I go? You're on the clock. I'm on the clock. I'm on the clock. I, I've got it narrowed down. Let's go with Nelly's character, Megat, from The Longest Yard. This He could have been the, the fastest 
you've got Forrest Gump that's fast, but as far as pure speed, him and the longest yard, you've got someone that's almost like a Tyree Kill type uh, player at running back that you can put in the slot. You can put him all over the field. That's the way the NFL is going now. It's going speed on offense and defense. So I want to have him rolling around the edge, rolling around the other edge. We're going to have Shane Falco running the read option with Maggot in the backfield. Good pick. Very good pick. Mr. Bennett, your third round selection. I want to have to change it up here a little bit because of Elrod's pick, but that's okay. That's going to better work, work good for me. I'm going to actually go on the offensive side of the ball here. And for my first pick, I'm going to go with a, uh, a speedy guy, a speedster guy also. I'm going to go with the Coyotes' top wide receiver option, and that is in Tweeter. Ah, uh, good pick. On the field, Tweeter has everything that you want from a receiver. He's fast. He's got good hands. He, work, he would work excellent in the slot, and he has excellent, excellent uh, uh, route running abilities. He's, if you go back and look, um, he, ha- he runs this post route to perfection and scores um, off the field. He's cocky. He's a comedian. He's a ladies' man, and he parties hard, which is basically everything you want from a wide receiver. So on the field and off the field, this guy has everything that you want. He caught the game-winning touchdown. Well, he was part of the game-winning touchdown, uh, a hook and ladder play with another fellow. And um, he also blocked a punt, which set up that game-winning touchdown for him. And probably more notable than his uh, ability on the field, he also stole a cop car with two girls in the back. (laughs) He's got the personality. He's got the charisma. He's got the athleticism. And I think he's a solid choice for my wide receiver. Solid, solid choice. There are some character issues there. Yes. Uh, but but when we look at the upside, there's not a lot more upside than Charlie Tweet. Um, and there are a lot of funny one-liners I could throw in here, but we do try to keep it family-friendly, so I will not. Uh, moving on to the fourth round. Mr. Bennett, you would be first in the fourth round. Fourth round. I'm staying with the uh, the same high school, one of his teammates. I'm going offensive lineman. I'm going with Billy Bob. Oh, number sixty nine. Oh. Hmm. Billy Bob. He's a he's a big body in there. He's a, a very very powerful guard. He's a he's a mower. Um, there's some injury concerns there with concussions, but really the only thing that's bigger than Billy Bob is his heart. He's he's a great teammate. He has the will to win, and um, if you go back and look, you know. Even though he's an offensive lineman, he wanted to be put in the game. He mows over three people so that Tweeter can make that block, which sets up that game-winning touchdown drive. And talk about that game-winning touchdown drive. Not only does he block well and he sets up the uh, the blocked punt, he also catches the game-winning touchdown. So we know he's got good hands. They win the district championship because of Billy Bob's catch and he practically runs through the entire team. So for my fourth pick, I'm going offensive lineman, Billy Bob. And if I have to rate this pick myself, I would give Billy Bob a 10, 10, 10. Quite possibly could be the steal of the draft. And if you want to say anything, I don't think he's confident enough. Uh, If you'll recall, Uh, He was noted in that huddle right before that last play, the hook and ladder that that took him to the state. He said – District. District, not state. Well, he took him to the playoffs. You don't think that lame play where I run down field and act like I'm lost is going to work, do you? Humility. Humility, humility, humility. What he lacks in, you know, mathematic abilities – it's got to be true, false. Guys holding up some fingers, true or false? True. What he might lack as far as in the classroom abilities, uh, his instincts, his humility, he's just a great guy. If, if I got somebody I want protecting me, I want Billy Bob. 
Oh, oh, you know, you, he, he, I about think he mine. does. He does have some confidence. I think Lance Harbor might have something to say about that. He 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 does ask Miss Davis to go to prom, so he's got some confidence. That that's that's a very very valid point. Yeah. I think Lance Harbor might have something to say about his blocking abilities. You got to put that on Coach Kilmer, he though. Was I mean, he, he's obvious concussion. But I might need one more. Get your at anyway. Um, Elrod, fourth round. Who you got? Show me the money, right? Show me the money right now. This is a great, great value pick in, in this late the game. Rob Tidwell. Yeah, Rob Tidwell was kind of washed up in Jerry Maguire. It was a match made in heaven because Jerry Maguire was pretty washed up too. But Rob Tidwell, it, he's like a Robbie Anderson type. He's just somebody you can put out there and he can just run around and make the big play. And he's no stranger to the spotlight. So I'm getting great value right here with Mr. Tidwell. I think there have been two steals in this draft so far. And I think each of you took one, and each of you took one in the fourth round. I love both of those fourth round picks. Um, when we get into my grading process, you're going to see how much I love both of those fourth round picks. But moving into the fifth round, Mr. Elrod. In the fourth round, he took a offensive lineman, but I'm taking a much better offensive lineman that doesn't get his quarterback killed. Uh, at least uh, – <laughs> At least not as much as Billy Bob. I'm taking Louis Elastic from T.C. Williams High School. Uh, he can play the tackle position. He's a large body. Uh, he can be. He can. He's kind of like a Swiss Army knife. He can put him at right tackle. You can put him at left tackle. But he's going to anchor uh, this line for Shane Falco. He's going to block for Megan, and he is going to help Tidwell run right down the field. So I'm taking. Virginia's own Louis Lastic to anchor my offensive line. Excellent pick. Love it. Mr. Bennett, fifth round. Who you got? All right. It's time for me to quit playing games. It's time to get serious here. Um, you know, this pick here, I'm going to throw out some names for you. Gail Sayers, Walter Payton, Dick Butkus. All three Chicago legends on the football field. One more Chicago legend to throw at you, Mr. Al Bundy, <laughs> running back, Paul Kai. This guy was, and he he was a football legend in Chicago. He was an All City running back, like I said for Paul Kai. He scored four touchdowns in a game, and not just any game. This was the 1966 City Championship, including the game-winning run. He could have went on and uh, had a great uh, collegiate career, but uh, he suffered a leg injury because a, uh, a Peggy, um, I think her name was what? Before she was a Bundy, what was she? A wanker? Peggy Wanker, that's what she was. She distracted him in the crowd and uh, wound up uh, getting him hurt there. So his, uh, his pretty much his football career was done there. Not so fast. No, it wasn't. If you recall, Al Bundy makes a deal with Lucifer himself. And the man that plays Lucifer, Lucifer in this episode is none other than Robert England. I know one of your uh, favorite actors in the horror genre. Uh, Bundy makes this deal with the devil here that he says, you could have my soul if you'll just let me um, play for the Bears and take him to the Super Bowl. And that's exactly what Bundy does. Bundy becomes probably the oldest rookie in the NFL, and he takes the Chicago Bears all the way up to the Super Bowl. And uh, before everything gets goes back to normal for him, and uh, Bundy was such a legend that his old high school football field was renamed Al Bundy Field. Who else on this list can say that their high school field was renamed after them? So, you have a Mr. Al Bundy. The running backs, like fifth round too. That should have been a first or second round pick. Mm. That that is a beautiful, beautiful pick. Um, that may be the new steal of the draft. We'll see. Um, all right, two rounds to go, gentlemen. Uh, and, and just to catch everybody up, Bennett has still yet to pick a quarterback. He's going value here. 
Elrod is still yet to pick a special teamer. Uh, both these guys have yet to draft a coach. Uh, other than that, both of these teams are shaping up to be absolutely solid. <laughs> Bennett, first pick of the sixth round. Who you got? Yeah, I'm, I'm going to save our quarterback to the very end. I'm, I'm going to go ahead and take my head coach, and I'm going to take Jimmy McKenzie, head coach for the replacements. The Washington Sentinels, we know, they go on strike, and uh, he's called upon to coach these replacements to keep the league going. He says that he would do it on the condition that he gets to pick his players. And, you know, the players he gets are the has-beens, the rejects, the criminals. And he, he takes all these people that nobody wants or people that were washed up, and he assembles this team and take them all the way into the playoffs. And that's when the strike ends. So I think for him to be able to get the most out of these players, for these players, you know, that just wanted a second chance to prove they still had something left in the tank, um, this coach, uh, Mr. McKenzie, was able to get everything out of these players. And to me, that makes him probably the greatest head coach that I could think of. So that was a no-brainer for me. Love it. All right. Coach, special teamer, sixth, seventh round. What have you got? Okay, I'll be honest with you. With my coach, since he has Billy Bob and, and the wide receiver, I really want to go coach Kelmer here. 22 district championships, count them, but I can't do it because he would destroy this team. He would have Rob Tidwell doing steroids, and he would have Louis Elastic 800 pounds. So I'm going to go with somebody that can take a group of individuals and truly uh, get the most out of them and win championships. So we're going with T.C. Williams, head coach, Herman Boone. He's going to have Shane Falco, Vontae Matt rolling into the – Rolling into the game, dancing. It's going to be cool. We're going to to have a good mood. He is going to lead this team to another championship because all he does, coming from North Carolina, winning championships, he comes to Virginia, wins championships. Herman Boone is a true leader of men and will be a great coach for this team. And, And absolutely love that pick. Love both of your picks for coaches. Uh, And not only are they great coaches, two of the greatest actors of our times. Gene Hackman um, is a living legend. Do you know he's 91 years old right now? Good. I didn't realize he was that old. I saw something the other day. It's incredible. He looks not a day over 75. Uh, but Gene Hackman uh, and, of course, Denzel Washington, two fantastic actors, played two fantastic coaches. All right, seventh round, last pick. To round out your teams, Mr. Elrod, your slot that is lacking is your special teamer. That's where Bennett went in the first round. Where are you going to finish your team? Well, I'm going to slide Tidwell to be my kick returner, so I don't need a kick returner. But I do need a punter, and I need Nigel the leg gruff from the replacements as my punter. You've got a guy that was an ex-Welsh soccer player, and he could truly kick and drink with the best of them. Uh, This guy could even kick while he's smoking. Now, Herman Boone's not going to like that, but I need somebody that can be a place kicker and also punt it deep and pin Al Bundy and Billy Bob deep. And I need somebody that can uh, kick the ball out of bounds so we don't have to worry about Forrest Gump uh, returning the, the ball to the end zone. So I'm going with Nigel Gruff. Love it. Love that pick. All right, minute. Mr. Irrelevant, so to speak. Last pick of the draft here, but you went special teams in the first round. Elrod took it to round out his team. Elrod went quarterback in the first round, and that's where you're going to go right here to round out your team. The last pick of this draft, your quarterback position, round number seven, who you got? This is going to be my value pick. I'm getting a guy that's going to anchor this entire team of talent I have here. And I'm going with Paul Wrecking Crew, quarterback for Mean Machine. Now, you need – there's two of them. You need the original. You need the one that was a former Florida State University Seminole standout in Burt Reynolds, not the Adam Sandler character. This is a former pro quarterback, so there's my – 
There's my uh, professional athlete that everybody said I didn't have on my team. He, he got into a little bit of trouble for uh, point shaving and found himself on the wrong side of the law and found himself in the uh, Citrus State Prison. And uh, lo and behold, the guards have a, uh, a semi-football, a semi-pro football team that was uh, it's pretty good. And um, crew here is tasked with assembling this team to face these guards. So you've got crew pretty much being the head coach scouting the talent. And he also says, okay, I'll play quarterback. And, um, you know, going into it, he makes a deal with them. You know, he says, hey, you know, I'll let the guards win as long as you don't hurt any of these guys. So he intentionally makes mistakes and they go down by more than three touchdowns and he takes himself out of the game. But then he sees – what these guards are doing to these players, you know, they're still, once they still go up by the 20, they're still, they're hurting these guys. And uh, Mr. Crude thinks that that's wrong, which it is. So he puts himself back in the game, brings these guys back from down three scores. And on the last play of the game, he takes the ball himself, runs to the right side, jerseys like half ripped off, and if you watch that last scene, you know, it's all going in slow motion, runs to the right, fakes, runs all the way back to the left, reaches in the end zone as time expires to give the mean machine the win over the guards. And that was kind of a, a big screw you to the warden, too. And he, he has that great line at the end of the movie where he goes and gets the football. They think he's trying to leave the stadium. He picks up the game ball shows it to the ward and says, stick that in your trophy case. So you've got a quarterback that has the talent, he has the leadership, and he has the greediness to look up to the adversity and face it head on. So for me, this could have been my first round pick, and for me to get him in the seventh round, great, great value there. Paul Wrecking Crew, hmm. the original. All right, gentlemen. Here's what we're going to do. I'm going to give you, first of all, let, let's recap these teams. Mr. Elrod, your team consists of the following. The first overall pick, Shane Falco, as your field general leading your team. You've got Earl Meggett, speed at running back. You've got show me the money, Rod Tidwell. Uh, lining up at receiver, doing your protection. You've got Louis Elastic. You've got Vontae Mack, no matter what, on your defensive side of your ball. You've got Nigel Gruff, ole, 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 as your special teamer. All of that wildness being put together and channeling for good by Coach Herman Boone. And then Bennett. Maybe the value pick of the draft, leading his team, Paul Wrecking Crew. He's got the poke high hero, Al Bundy, at running back. He's got the one and only Charlie Tweeter uh, as his receiver. Tweeter's high school teammate, Billy Bob, holding up the line. He's got the water boy, Bobby Boucher, uh, and, and, and on his defense, He's got the All-American, Forrest Gump, the special teams, all being held together, all these misfits. Nobody better to handle a group of misfits than Jimmy McGinty. Elrod, you want to go first or second? First. Why is your team the better team than Mr. Bennett's? It's simple, Rod. This could not be any more simple. Bennett's team is composed of a bunch of misfits. Uh, what I can kick the ball. I, Herman Boone can kick the ball away, or he can have the ball kicked away from Forrest Gump. That takes out one of his primary weapons. So I'm just dealing with Al Bundy, who was a high school player, Twitter, who couldn't get in the college, Billy Bob, who got his quarterback killed, and Bobby Boucher, who uh, couldn't speak any English hardly. So I've got the general Shane Falco. I've got speed on the outside with Tibble. I've got Megat that can be my Tyree Kill type player. I've got Louis Elastic that's anchor in this offensive line. I've got Vontae Mack that's going to be in the backfield on every play. And I've got a calm, cool, collective head coach, Herman Boone. I've got consistency across the board. 
I've got, uh, I've just got it all right. I mean, th this could not be any more simple. This is a simple choice. Go for consistency over flash. And that's what you've got here. Bennett, why is your team the better team? All right. Let me just go through the list here. Falco, great quarterback, but I believe those uh, those footsteps come back to him, and he starts throwing five more interceptions when Bobby Boucher is in his face. Uh, Vontae Mack, okay, he's never he's never went up against a Billy Bob. Billy Bob's a big old boy, you know. This is this isn't Ohio State anymore. Billy Bob, Billy Bob can take two of them on. Megat, okay, he's a rapper. Good job. Rod Tidwell, good pick. That's a good one. I, I like that pick. Um, offensive lineman, okay. Lassick's okay. Head coach, good. And you got a kicker. Um, my team will have no use for a kicker because I'm scoring and going for two, so I don't really need a kicker. And Analytics. Uh, on my side, I've got Forrest Gump. He's my All-American. He's my speed. I've got Bobby Boucher, who's – the Bourbon Bowl MVP, the uh, Mister 16 sacks in the game. He's going. He's he's man in the defense. He's fearless. Um, I've got Tweeter. That's my personality of my team. That's my that's my skill. That's my hands. That's uh that's all my uh, off the field distractions is going to be Tweeter, but that's okay. I've got Billy Bob who can do it all. He can block. He can help punt or uh, block punts. And uh, if I need him to go down the field and act like he doesn't know what he's doing, he can definitely do that too. I've got Bundy. I don't even have to say his first name. I can just say Bundy. And you, you know four touchdowns in a single game, Mr. Al Bundy. I've got the head coach who's going to be able to get all out of these misfits, these rejects that I have. And then my last pick, great value with Paul Wrecking Crew. That's my leader. That's my greediness, and that's my experience who's going to be able to take these guys to the next level. So I think – and I got every single person that I wanted, and I was able to get my quarterback in the very last round. So I think – I'm pretty I'm pretty proud of who I got. I, I like it. I think it's a good team. Well, gentlemen, here's, here's the thing with me judging this. I think both of you have amassed excellent teams here. And I have proof to show that I think you both amassed excellent teams because here's what I did. The last time that I mediated a draft, I had a bunch of lists, lists from this site, lists from this site. What would my picks be? This is a category I can't really find a lot of lists from other people's sites. So here's what I did. And let's be honest, at one point, peek behind the curtain, we tried to get a fourth in this week, and I was going to participate in this show. Um, our usual go-tos for a fourth happened to all be busy this week. Uh, so I had to kind of reluctantly go back to mediating because I really wanted to participate in the show, but in a way I got to participate even more than you guys did, because here's what I did that I went into it, how I was going to determine my winner. I came up with an all rut first team an all-rut second team, and a rut list of honorable mentions. And if they were on the all-rut first team, that was worth five points. If they're on the all-rut second team, that was worth three points. If they were on my honorable mentions list, that was worth a point. If it was somebody I hadn't mentioned, you get nothing. Mm. I am proud to say every single pick in this draft was on one of my lists. So congratulations to both of you. I do believe you both assembled fantastic teams. Glad I didn't go with Airbud then. Yeah, you, good call. <laughs> good call. Um, I'm going to read my list, and then I'm going to tell you how the points shook out. And I'm going to start with my honorable mentions. Now, the first team and second team, there's one person for that guy, for that slot. Honorable mentions, there might be two, there might be four or five. Just people I thought would be honorable mentions. Here were my quarterback honorable mentions. Uh, there were two of them. One of them is Bennett's quarterback. Paul Crew was on my list of honorable mentions. 
My other honorable mention quarterback, kind of surprised nobody said, his teammates were picked, but the Mox, Jonathan Moxon, was one of my honorable mentions that neither of you picked. Not Lance Harbor? He's got injury concerns, man. I mean, he had a full ride to Florida State, but he lost it. He ended up, you know, sticking around and, and coaching Pee Wee football in West Canaan. Uh, so, is that worth the word? Close. Um, <laughs> Moxon didn't go to play anywhere, but he did go to Brown because he didn't want his dad's life. Uh, so, that's what put him on the honorable mention. Honorable mention running backs. I had two, neither one of you picked them. Um, I had Julian Washington from any given Sunday played by LL Cool J. Um, and I had somebody that almost made my second team, but got slotted down to honorable mention because of an injury, Booby Miles. Mm. Booby Miles is a fantastic running back from, uh, of course, Friday Night Lights. Um, but Booby Miles, neither one of you mentioned them. Um, honorable uh-huh. mention wide receiver. Uh, a teammate of his was taken. Paul Crew was taken, but and Earl Meggett was taken. Deacon Moss, wide receiver for the Mean Machine, was not taken. Uh, that was my honorable mention wide receiver. Honorable mention offensive lineman, Louis Elastic, picked by Mr. Elrod. I had four honorable mentions on defense. Uh, one of the first one taken by Elrod, Vontae Mack. Uh, no matter what. Uh, the other ones, Julius Campbell from Remember the Titans, Danny Bateman from The Replacements, of course. His character was good, but that's kind of my nod to John Favreau for saving the Star Wars franchise. Um, and then the unconventional pick and my honorable mention that I thought Bennett could pick, but I kind of doubted it. The only female on my list. Icebox, Becky O'Shea from Little John. On my list. The Icebox, honorable mention. Uh, my honorable mention special teamer, Ray Finkel. He went on to be <laughs> yes. a female police chief. But, you know, he did have a successful career with the Dolphins until Dan Marino didn't put the laces out. Uh, so, yeah. So, um, I had three head coaches on my honorable mention list, and each of you picked one. I had Jimmy McGinty on the honorable mention. I had Herman Boone on the honorable mention. And Herman Boone's coordinator, other coach, uh, Bill Yost. Those were my honorable mention coaches. Meaning, my first team and second team, all rut coaches, neither one were picked, surprisingly enough. Uh, Getting into the three-point guys for my second team, the all rut second team, quarterback, neither one of you took any given Sunday, steaming Willie Beeman. You want to talk about flash. You want to talk about character. You want to talk about life of your team. Steaming Willie Beeman. Neither of you took him. Second team all rut running back. Mean machine Earl Maggot. Taken by Mr. Elrod. Second team all, all second team wide receiver. Mr. Charlie Tweeter. Taken by Mr. Bennett. Second team had a tie for my second team offensive lineman. Neither of you took either one of them. Uh, Jamal and Andre Jackson, the brothers, the guards uh, that protected Shane Falco on the Washington Sentinels. I couldn't differentiate between the two, so I made them both second team. Um, (laughs) Second team defender, Charles Jefferson uh, from Fast Times at Richmond High. He absolutely destroyed a car or destroyed a lot of things when he thought people messed with his car. They thought the guy didn't even go to school there. They just flew him in for the games. Uh, Fantastic defensive lineman that you did not want to piss off. Neither of you picked him. My second team special teamer, ole, 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 ole. Nigel Gruff was my second team special teamer. And my second team coach that neither of you picked, 22 district championships. Mr. Nah. He was a douchebag, uh, but he was a great coach, uh, at least until the end. Um, the first team all ruts. All of them were chosen except the coach. The coach that was not chosen 
was Tony D'Amato from any given Sunday, played by the great Al Pacino. Neither of you took my first team coach. But my first team quarterback, that would have been my first pick, and I had the first pick in this draft, Mr. Elrod took Shane Falcon. My first team running back, Polkai Hero, four touchdowns in a single game, Mr. Al Bundy, taken by Mr. Bennett. My first team wide receiver, show me the money. Show me the money, Rod Tidwell was my first team receiver. My first team offensive lineman, is there a question? Billy Bob, Billy Bob, Billy Bob. Um, Billy Bob was my first team offensive lineman. First team, my first team defender. Bobby Boucher. And my first team special teamer, the All American from the Crimson Tide. Mm. Bennett's first round pick, Forrest Gump. So as I said, all both of you guys did not pick anybody that wasn't on one of the, these three lists. Um, if you break it down by position, which is the way I thought about doing it, I didn't do it that way. If you broke it down by position, uh, Bennett would win four to two to one uh, because I have Herman Boone and Jimmy McGinty is kind of a push. Uh, I would give Elrod Falco. I would give Elrod Rod Tidwell. Uh, but then I would give Bennett, Bundy, Billy Bob, Boucher, Gump, just because those were my first teamers. But like I said, I didn't go that way. I went with a point system that would show no favoritism, at least not outwardly. Uh, it would be based on who you guys picked. First team, five points. Second team, three points. Honorable mentions, one point. And with a score of 25 to 19, the winner of this draft, is Mr. Bennett's team. Mm. But I love both of your teams. I think Elrod has the best players. I think Bennett has the best team. So, Mr. Bennett, you have convinced me, based by my own data, that you have picked the best team. What do you have to say for yourself? You know, I think this is going to go down. It was probably one of our better episodes of 2021 because – I got Forrest Gump in the first round, but I couldn't have done it without Bobby Boucher and Tweeter and Billy Bob and Mr. Al Bundy, Paul Reck and crew and Jimmy McKenzie. You know, not bad for a bunch of a uh, bunch of rejects here. Uh, you know, it was fun. You know, it was that was very. I, I love doing the draft style, and anytime I can get a, a Forrest Gump reference in, I'm, I'm good for it. So yeah. Uh, Good show for me. Good show. Wait, 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 whoa, 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 whoa. We got a uh, breaking news on my team. We have fired Coach Herman Boone, and we have hired Coach Kilmer. Coach Kilmer says that everybody gets the roids, and he's ready to kick some tail. So that is breaking news on my team. Boone is out. Kilmer is in, and we're ready to win some district championships. Count them. All right. Well, that would improve you from 19 to 21, which would still be less than 25, but it's all about improvement. And, and so, I mean, you're getting there. No, seriously, Elrod, you lost tonight, which is nothing new for this show, but you impressed me. The Falco pick, I love. The Tidwell pick, I love. You picked nobody off the wall. This is a great team. You should, it's a proud loss. Proud loss. Do, you, do you have anything to say for yourself? I don't. Uh, Coach Kilmer, he's got some. Uh, he's got some. Um, some bones to pick with uh, Mr. Billy Bob. He does, and and the wide receiver. He's got some. He, he better watch out for him. Uh, him and Falco is going to be deadly. Deadly, I'm telling him, literally deadly. Hey, he is good with quarterbacks. So, all right, guys. Well, this has been a lot of fun. Uh, I wanted to participate in this, but, you know, this was fun to mediate. Uh, since I got to basically pick three teams of guys uh, to use to score with, so that, that was a big plus for me. Uh, hope you guys enjoyed, too. Enjoy the big game this Sunday. 
Chiefs and, and Bucks. And uh, hopefully uh, we will have a great show for you next week. Not real sure what that's going to be yet. Um, hopefully the three of us on here will uh, soon be having a meeting and then we can go several weeks telling you what the next show will be. Uh, but we'll just have to see how that pans out. So uh, for myself, for Mr. Bennett, for Mr. Elrod, thank you guys for joining us. Don't forget to follow us on the socials. And uh, until next week, peace.